Frank Collin, 2519 West 71st Street, Chicago. There you are. There's your Jew influence right there. What do you mean? They got the address right? Oh, no. Here's the address on our letterhead. Central Headquarters, National Socialist Party of America. They made damn sure to leave that out. What did they say? Are they going to let us demonstrate in the park out there? Yeah, sure. If we post a $350,000 insurance bond to cover possible damage to park property. I'll tell you, if those Martin Luther Coons wanted to demonstrate, they I wouldn't ask them. I don't know why you tried to get a permit out in Skokie. Everybody knows it's a damn Jew town. What we want to do is to march right here in Chicago, in Marquette Park. I mean, our people are here with the jigs moving in. They're going to listen to us. Shut up. I'm the leader here. Hear me? I'm the leader. signs, white free speech, he's touched all bases. Demonstrators shall make no derogatory remarks, either orally or in writing, against ethnic or religious groups. Sure. They stay in Chicago where he belongs. Good morning. Good morning. Yes? Where were you? I've been calling you since 10 o'clock this morning. Downtown in court. That's wonderful. I need my village no, attorney. No, don't, don't get excited, Al. I've got a private practice to take care of as, as well. You read Collins' letter? It's not going to be simple. He knows what he's doing. This demonstration is a meeting and exercise of the constitutional privilege of petitioning for redress of grievances. Ha! It's the Bill of Rights. You read the last paragraph? Demonstrators will march in uniform wearing the symbol of the National Socialist Party of America. Nazi stormtroopers with swastikas. That's exactly what I need outside the mayor's office. Nazis. <sighs> Bert, I wanted you in on this from the beginning. Now, we've, we've got a very explosive situation here. A very large part of the town council is of Hebrew persuasion. Jews. <laughs> Jews, Al. It, it's all right. Just say Jews. Exactly. Out of a population of 70,000, we have somewhere around 30,000 Jews. And on top of that, a very significant number of those people are survivors of the Nazi concentration camps and their families. Very solid citizens, too. Voters. Just what are you getting at, Your Honor? Well, look, Bert, the idea of it. Nazis, swastikas, and all those people out there who survived the whole horrible thing. There's a, there's a humanitarian impact. And, uh, all right, they voted for me, yes. I have an obligation to those people. I, I have to face that. Yes, I guess so. Bert, I've always prided myself on being absolutely blind to race or color or religion in my administration, but I... I want your personal opinion, because you're the village attorney and also because uh, you just happen to be Jewish. Al, it didn't just happen. Help me, will you? What in God's name can we do? Al, I'm, I'm not trying to duck this, but I wasn't exactly crazy about that Park District insurance dodge. 
Chicago tried to use that against Colin, and he went out and got Herb Lewison of the American Civil Liberties Union to challenge it in the courts. Yeah, okay, I know that. My ballpark opinion is that eventually every one of those insurance requirements will be thrown out as unconstitutional. Bert, I want your personal reaction. As a Jew? Al, for every two Jews, you're going to get three opinions. Call me about the math. Well, see you when I was later. You better call me anyway. I don't know if I can stay over. I gotta ask my dad. Well, then you call me. Okay. Okay. Bye. Right. See you later. Yes, there's a meeting. Bertha, I promised her spirits. I will sit there. I will say nothing. What do you mean, Max? What does that mean, Max? Ma Max, you will interfere. I what do you mean, interfere? When do I interfere? Bertha, I'm a person who minds his own business, and I will not... Max, all I'm saying is... Bertha, a promise is a promise. Shh. The kid is tall. What are we saying that... Shh. Oh, please, Janet, don't drop the ring in the can. You could swallow it. What's wrong? Wrong? Nothing. Nothing is wrong. You just got home? Hmm? I told you there were tryouts for the cheerettes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yes, yes. How was it? Good? Yeah. Look, you will be the best cheerette anybody ever saw. You know that? Well, they only take a couple of sophomores. Well, don't worry about it, because they'll take you. First of all, you're the prettiest, and you're a very good dancer, so why are you worried? Oh, it's all politics anyways. Uh. Oh, Pop, all the kids are going over to Penny Jansen's after supper. I'm gonna stay over. Can you drop me there? Hmm? Penny Jansen's over near Lincolnwood. Who went tonight? You see, you have to take her all the way to Lincolnwood. You couldn't go with Hershkowitz in the first place. Uh, uh, Janet. Honey, you know I would take you. I, I would like to take you, but 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 I promise. I just can't tonight. Tonight is a problem. You you understand. I, I can't tonight. Well, as a matter of fact, if you let me get my license, oh, I, I don't want to hear about license. Everybody gets one. Penny took her test on her 16th birthday. Sweetheart, we'll talk about the license another time, huh? But if Mom would just, I, I, she got I, against the driver's license. I know license. that, but I just can't do it tonight. Tonight it's different. No, it isn't. I always have to ask you to take me anywhere. I mean, it's absolutely Oedipal. Oedipal? Janet, let Daddy alone. Well, I got a right to know why. Look, look, honey, I... Because it's Friday night, I, I have to go to synagogue. You never go except on Yom Kippur for some kid's bar mitzvah. <laughs> Janet, please, sir. Maybe a uh, uh, Danny Bomb next door will uh, uh, drive you. Uh, or a taxi. Hmm? Why is Daddy going to a synagogue tonight? It's nothing, nothing. It's a special meeting of the, uh, the men's club. I throw out the men's club stuff with the junk mail. Bertha, maybe we should explain to you. Max, the kid does not hear him. Ma, why do you think I don't understand if you say it in Yiddish? She shouldn't have to hear such things. Bertha. She is 16 years old. She's a, she's a person of intelligence. What it is, is Nazis are coming here to Skokie. What do you mean? Nazis? Um, look, uh, uh, why don't we have a supper? Mom. And then... Pop. I got the call from the community organization. What they want? Like I said, Nazis from Chicago. They're coming to march here in Skokie in three weeks. I saw him on TV in a park or something. Is that all? Yeah. Yeah, that's all. It's nothing. Why did you have to say in front of the child? Mom, do you always have to call me the child? She's a little girl in America. What did she have to hear? Bertha, please. Why do you have to go? I promised Herskowitz. You say something, you call attention? I will not say anything. When do I ever say anything? I'm a quiet man. I will sit quietly with Herskowitz and I will listen. Don't worry. Excuse me. 
Now, as you know, one of our important jobs in the Anti-Defamation League of the B'nai B'rith is to keep a close watch on anti-Semitic activities in the United States. The old German-American Bund of the 30s was financed by the German government itself, and it disappeared with the outbreak of World War II. Now, the current Nazi splinter group started about 10 years after the war with George Lincoln Rockwell, who was a brilliant manipulator of publicity. He could always seduce the newspapers and television into giving him coverage, even though he never had more than 500 followers nationally. Now, Colin and his Chicago group are one of the tiny splinter parties across the country. Now, I, I don't believe in underestimating anti-Semitism, but our best professional opinion is that Colin and groups like his are so isolated from American realities that they do not present any kind of present danger to the safety and security of Jews. How do they work? They exploit the anger and outrage of decent people to get what they can't achieve for themselves. Attention, publicity. They create trouble to get in the newspapers and on television. Now, over the years, we have developed a tactic to deal with this. Quarantine. Our advice to Jewish communities is to refuse to give them the confrontation they want. When they show up with 15 or 20 of their shabby Erzat stormtroopers, turn your back. Don't give the television camera anything exciting to take a picture of. The worst thing you can do is to give them a platform, national exposure to spread their anti-Semitic garbage. <sighs> That's, uh, <laughs> that's about it. I'll be glad to answer any questions uh, about developing a game plan to deal with this situation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Rosen. That's all there is? I would like to introduce I mean, the now, man came all the way from downtown. That's all he's going to say. Shh, the, the rabbi's talking. Here in Skokie. And he's always expressed the close cooperation of the non-Jewish and Jewish communities. What is he talking about? It is a about source of game? great personal strength. Well, well, what are we, a football friend. team or Ladies something? Ladies and gentlemen, the Chicago Mayor of Bears. Skokie, Why doesn't he say something? Albert Smith. <laughs> Thank you, Reverend Steinberg. Mr. Rosen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to make something absolutely clear to all my Jewish friends here this evening. And that is that your Christian neighbors here in the village of Skokie hold hoodlums like Frank Collin and his ilk in the utmost contempt. We share your outrage and your concern. And we intend to act in utmost good faith to assure the safety... Excuse me. ...and uh, the protection... I beg your of... pardon. I would like to ask a question. Well, yes, sir. I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have in a moment or two. However, there well, are... With respect, Your Honor, not you. The other one. The one from the Chicago Anti-Defamation. I think we should hold all questions for Mr. Rosen until... He just said that he would be happy to answer questions. I'm sorry if I'm out of order. But I, I do have a question. No, it's, it's all right. It's all right. I'd be happy to defer a question to Mr. Rosen. Go ahead, sir. Ask your question. I am Ma Max Feldman. I am the president and founder of Precision Fabricating Incorporated, which is uh, located here in Skokie on Springfield Boulevard. I just want to tell Mr. Rosen from Chicago that what he said went straight inside me like, uh, like an echo. If you have a question, Mr. Feldman. I kept saying to myself, Max, Max, somewhere I heard that speech before. But, but not here. Not in Chicago, not in America. But where did I hear that speech? I heard it in Germany. It came from the big city. Very fine professional men, all members of the national Jewish organizations. I was very young, but I remember what they said. Nazis, stormtroopers, <laughs> hoodlums in the street. How many are there, a handful? They're just petty criminals. Don't pay attention. Go home, they said. Close the doors, pull down the window shades. Don't look. Nothing will happen. Quarantine. They talked about quarantine. Strategies, game plans, tactics. I don't mean to offend you, but there was then a Mr. Rosen who said there are no danger to the safety and to the security of the Jews. So my question to Mr. Rosen is no. No, Mr. Feldman, no. Mr. Feldman, please. There'll be plenty of time for comment from the floor, and we do have outside guests. You know what this is? A tattoo. 
a number. Fear and Zwanzig, Fear Sex and Dreisig. It's a concentration camp number. Do you know what that meant? Can you know what really happened? Can you know what the swastika was? Can you know what is a Nazi? Uh, Mr. Feldman, I understand. Believe me, there is no way of minimizing or arguing with the personal pain, the tragedy and suffering of people who have come through the Holocaust. I am trying to recommend a practical, proven tactic for today's reality. No, sit down. no, sit down. no. I came here to sit, to listen, not to say anything. But I don't want to hear about tactics and strategies. This is not a game. I will not go home. I will not pull down the window shades. Not this time. Not in my own town, where I made a business and a home, where I raised my child. If a Nazi marches here in Skokie, you can believe me, I will be there. I will be there with baseball bats, with a gun, with anything. I will be there in Skokie with the Nazi tomorrow. Please. Mr. Feldman, I understand your feelings, I assure you. Who could be a Jew and not understand? But I won't condone any call for violence. Forgive me, I mean no disrespect for the sufferings of Jews. But we cannot sink to the level of the Nazis themselves. Rabbi! The Jews, in particular, must always depend upon the protection of law. Rabbi! You don't know. You are a young man from Cincinnati. What do you know? Feldman is right. The whole tactic of nonviolence as developed by Gandhi. Excuse me. I don't have to hear from a yeshiva book about Mahatma Gandhi. You weren't there. You didn't see it happen. We did. We saw our mothers and fathers murdered. Children beaten to that's death. Right, that's right. We saw it. We saw it. In my family, there is nobody. A cousin in Tel Aviv, that is all. My mama, my papa, my brothers and sisters, my uncles, my aunts, my cousins, nobody. You want us to walk into the gas chambers again, is that what you want? I am an old man, but I would fight. I don't care if I drop dead from my heart. Who are the police? The police are going to let the Nazis march in, in this America? Please, look, we're all on the same side. The only question is, this is a matter of handling a very complex and sophisticated problem in a practical way. Believe me, we have had experience. The most effective way of handling this is to quarantine. you and Mayor Smith you want to avoid violence I'll tell you how if you want no violence keep the Nazis out because if they march here if they bring the swastika here I swear to you nothing there is nothing will keep me from fighting them. and the memory of my mother the Nazis will not march. On my life, on the grave of my mother, which was a lime pit in the death camp at Mauthausen, a pile, a heap of naked Jewish bodies, on that grave, I swear it. Oh, no, he just puts it on. He only had one can and he gave me half. What were they doing out on the porch? Oh, Donna and Bill Samuel? Yeah, I thought they were making out, but they were just sitting there. They were smoking. Doing dope? Well, yeah, I told them they had to go outside. I didn't want my folks coming downstairs to smell it. Yeah. yeah. Shh. Folks. Debbie. Is that you? Grandma Jansen. She always wakes up. Penny, come in here for a minute, will you, dear? Coming. Well, you ought to be asleep, Grandma. 
Oh, I don't need much sleep these days. Here, here. Sit down, dear. What's your name? Janet. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, how was the party? It was very nice. It's great. You seemed like very nice children. They're okay. Yeah. Good night, Grandma. Mm -hmm. Good night, dear. Janet? Good night. Penny, if I were you, I'd get rid of those beer cans before your mother gets up for breakfast in the morning. I took care of it, Grandma. <laughs> I think she drives Mom up the wall, but I love her. You know, it's funny. She's older than God or something, and yet she seems to understand how I feel, you know? Yeah. I remember when I was a little girl, and I used to wake up in the middle of the night, and if I was real scared, or if I was unhappy, I used to run into her room and climb up on her bed and snuggle in with her. And everything smelled of old-fashioned smells, like lavender and verbena and starched eyelet embroidery and stuff. And I'd grab onto the end of her braid, and I'd twirl it around my finger. And I could cry if I wanted to. And everything would be okay. Are you crying or something? Did I say something? What is it? I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I'm sorry, Janet. Something about Grandma? I guess it made me think of my grandma. I don't know what's the matter with me. Well, what was she like? Your grandmother. I don't know. As a matter of fact, I never knew any of my grandparents. Wish I cry over that. That's a dumb reason. Your folks were refugees. From Germany or something? Something. I know they were in a concentration camp. They've got numbers on their arms. And that's why my mom won't wear short sleeve blouses. Oh, wow. I don't know very much else about it. I mean, my mother and father never talk about it. I never asked. It's just dumb to suddenly start crying about nothing. I mean, I feel awful sad. Like I lost something and I can never find it. JDL. What's, what's the JDL? Jewish Defense League. They're, well, they're sort of an ultra-militant Jewish action group. They picket Arab delegations, the Soviet consulate. They do a little more than that. The point is they've announced their intention of coming here and confronting the Nazis in the street. Great. Great. We're going to have a convention here. here. Have you seen these? Yeah. Take a look at this. A call to progressive forces smash the Nazis. No free speech for fascists. Who put this out? Uh, some far-out communist splinter group from Chicago. Maoist or something. I'm very much concerned this is going to lead to violence. Oh, hell, I can guarantee it's going to lead to violence. You got Colin and his Nazis, your Jewish defense bunch. They're not my bunch. All right, all right, I know. The point is, we're going to have a police problem that I can't handle by myself. I have to borrow from the state police. You left out the survivors. They've been holding meetings nearly every night this week. And there's always one of the survivors there taking a very tough line. Saul Goldstein, Max Feldman, he's been at nearly every meeting. And they're not particularly interested in Abbott Rosen's line. And the rest of the congregations there are backing them all the way. There, sir. I am back. Uh, how, how was the meeting? How should it be? It was like the others. Uh, who was there? Rosen. Rosen from the Anti-Defamation League. What did he want? What he always wants. Quarantine. He, he doesn't give up. Don't give them the satisfaction, he said. Well, I would like to give them plenty, but not satisfaction. Saul Goldstein was elected the head of the Survivors Committee. <laughs> You'll hear plenty from him, don't worry. Uh, he was on the six o'clock news. Who? What's the matter, you sick? 
had a headache, a little dizzy. No, I'm all right. Did did you take something? I took something. Uh, uh, Max. What? This isn't good for you. You had blood pressure last year. That was last year, Bertha. This year I have no blood pressure. Blood pressure you get from holding things in. Why don't you let the people handle it? Whose job it is? The rabbi. What kind of a rabbi is that? He's a kid. He plays tennis. He doesn't even look like a rabbi. He has a beard. A beard. You call that a beard? My account executive from the advertising agency has such a beard. Better a rabbi should have a beard. Huh? It's foolish. I mean, who is Max Feldman to set himself up against professionals? Do you think the Anti-Defamation League doesn't understand anti-Semitism? Anti-Semitism, they understand. Nazis, I understand. Why do you think you can handle things better? Maybe you're making a mistake. I will just not pull down the window shades. Oh, look, who's to say they're not right? His picture was in the paper with his swastika. It was on the, the six o'clock TV. Suppose quarantine is right. Quarantine is not right. Daddy? What? Can I talk to you? No, I, I have a free morning tomorrow. Uh, okay, to, because I, I'm, I'm a little bit tired tonight. Daddy, it's important. I want to talk to you now. All right. If it's important, then I'll talk to you now. Well, what is it? Something to do with the cheerettes? You need a sweater or something? How did Grandma Ida die? What? How did Grandma Ida die? It's just been bothering me, that's all. I mean, you never seem to talk about it. I've got a right to know. After all, she was my grandmother. All right. Come sit down. Come. Come sit down. I will tell you. <sighs> the town we lived in was close to the Polish border. And my father was a, a tinsman. A blecher, they called him. He died ten years before. And then there was a, an order for the deportation of all the Jews. And in my family, there was my mother and my sister and my mother's sister, Tante Leia. <laughs> she was a nice woman. I liked her. We never did find out what happened to her, ever. First, we were in an Arbeitskommando. That's uh, it's a forced labor camp. We were digging gravel from a hill over here and dragging it in carts to a place over there. No one ever said why. We were just doing it. And there were the soldiers and the capos. That they were the prisoners who were guards with, with clubs. And if you spilt a shovel, and if you didn't move the cart fast enough, they would beat you. And if you fell down and couldn't get up, they would beat them until they were dead. Or maybe shoot them. And they would just lie there like a bundle of rags. And all day long you would drag the cards back and forth, back and forth. And in the end you would say, what is that? You would forget. It was Chaim Lebowski or some human being laying there. It would be just a bundle of rags. And once a week was the selection. A captain from the SS would come with shining boots and a swastika on his arm. And everybody was lined up. And they would pass by. And they had a stick stick with a little leather loop and he went with the stick left to right left to right and if he went right it meant you were alive for another week but if he went left 
you were never seen again. I used to watch my mother getting weaker and weaker. She, she was a, a sewer, a seamstress. She used to embroider fancy things for the rich ladies in town. The beautiful, delicate flowers with silk threads. They were beautiful. She, she wasn't a strong woman to begin with. How long could she keep dragging the carts with gravel and rocks up to the hill? Then the day came when everybody was lined up and my mother passed and the captain, that's all, little way like that to the left I started to shout and to run after her and three people held me down and they stuffed rags in my mouth so I should shut up there's nothing you can do they said that's what they said there's nothing you can do later after the war, I was in a British DP camp, and I met a man from our town, Lev Bukatinsky was his name, a carpenter. He worked under commando at Mutthausen. They were the, the prisoners who did the work around the gas chambers, piling up the boots, sorting out the clothes, carrying the bodies. He told me, he said, Maxo, I saw your mother. She was on a cart going to the lime pit. He remembered her from town. He apologized to me, but to make sure he went close to look. The bodies were naked. He said it was your mother. I recognized her from her red hair. Thank you. I... I just wanted to know. Hello? Is this Max Feldman? Max Feldman? Yes? You Jew bastard. The only trouble with Hitler is he didn't finish the job. Who, who is this? We're going to march right over you, Jew boy. Why don't you stick your head in the gas oven and... It's not for you. That's Chief Buchanan. Well, some of our JDL friends are here. They're like they dressed up for World War III. Hora. What? Hora. It's a Jewish folk dance. Yeah. Well, we got five days. You think there's going to be trouble? I know there's going to be trouble. You got at least three groups here looking for a fight. What's it going to take, a push, a 
rock, a bottle. All right. Now, suppose we can keep them apart. We can give Collins a sidewalk uh, downstairs. The other ones, the JDL over in the parking lot here on Douglas Street. That new left group from Chicago all the way down here on Doyle Place. No. Art, we're going to get absolutely nowhere if you just take a negative attitude. You're not going to be able to keep these groups apart, Mr. Mayor. You'd have to call out the National Guard. And I'm afraid you've left out another group. Mr. Feldman and the survivors. There was another meeting last night, and they voted to hold a counter-demonstration in the municipal parking lot. Well, that's the last piece, isn't it? Look, there's no way around it, Al. If those Nazis march in Skokie, there's going to be violence. Well, you're our lawyer. Aren't you going to say anything? Damn it, I'm the mayor of this town, and I have the right to keep the peace. Nobody wants those pissant Nazis around here. There's got to be some way of kicking them out and keeping the peace. Bert! Well, as an attorney, there are certain constitutional overtones. It, it's very complicated. It isn't. It's very simple. If they march, there's going to be violence. Therefore, they're not going to march. Frank Collin and his Nazis aren't going to set one foot in Skokie. That's it. Period. Now, you're the village attorney, and you figure out how we're going to do that. Can I talk to you? Uh, Mr. Collins, it's a little late right now. I'll be in my office at 10 in the morning. It's important. The office is closing right now. You're right? my lawyer. Your lawsuit against the Chicago Park District won't come up in court for another three or four weeks. Call me in my office, will you? It's not about the Chicago Park case. It's something else. I just received this from the village of Skokie. It's a whole new case. I think you ought to look at it. I can stay for a while, Herb, if you want. No, I'll take care of it. Thank you. Mr. Cohen? See you tomorrow, Sheila. Bye. What is it this time? Notice of a filing by the village of Skokie in Cook County Circuit Court against Colin, his party at Al. Yeah? They're seeking an injunction to bar Colin and his followers from parading in uniform on the streets of Skokie on May 1st. There's a notice of hearing in Cook County Circuit. Village of Skokie by Bertram Silverman, Corporation Counsel. Have you looked it over? Yeah. Well? It's worse than the Chicago Park case. Oh. What does it involve? First Amendment. Free speech, assembly, it's pretty clear. Well, what do you think? About what? The case. Do we take it? Can't avoid it. You look at it from the uh, purely legal view. What other view is there? <laughs> we already got a lot of heat representing Colin. What does that have to do with a clear violation of the First Amendment? Now, take it easy, Herb. Take it easy, please. I I'm just trying to assess the situation. We can't back away from a violation of the First Amendment that is this clear. Look, I'm going to have to answer to the board. On Why a thing would the board like have that. any question about it? Well, for one thing, he's a Nazi. And there are a number of Jews on the board. Dave, I'm a Jew, too. I know you're a Jew. But this isn't Chicago. This is Skokie. And you are going to have to take a position supporting a Nazi against concentration camp survivors. If this office doesn't take the case, I'm going to resign and represent wait, him on my own. Wait, I didn't say anything like that. Now, I am just trying to prepare our position. Because as sure as hell is going to be trouble. The principle is the same whether it's Colin and his Nazis or Martin Luther King and some civil rights march. The philosophy may be the same, but you know, public relations are a little different. Herb, I've got to protect you. I'm going to get in touch with the board chairman. And he is going to order you to take on the case. He doesn't have to order me to do anything. But I know. No, I know. I want you covered against any kind of personal attack. 
Okay, Dave. What do we do? Well, I'm going home. I want you to try the list of attorneys we've used on past cases. Excuse me, can I well, just get under Maybe. I don't think I'm going to find one. This I petition has to be answered in the morning. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Would you call Rachel and tell her I won't be home till about sure. 8 or 9 o'clock? Is that him? That's him. Your Honor... This is a simple First Amendment case. The village of Skokie seeks an order preventing an exercise of free speech before the speech has ever occurred. And in spite of the fact that it has been proposed as an orderly exercise, taking place for only 20 minutes on public property in front of the Skokie Municipal Building. Now, however we might disapprove of what may be the content of the speech, there is no question that it falls within the protection of the First Amendment. And a court order granting such a prior restraint would be clearly unconstitutional. As we already have made clear in our complaint, Your Honor, the circumstances in the case are exceptional. The population of the village of Skokie is some 40% Jewish, including an inordinately high percentage of survivors of the Holocaust and immediate families of those who were murdered by the Nazis in Europe. This threatened march by Nazis is a deliberate attempt to exacerbate the sensitivities of the Jewish population of Skokie and to incite racial and religious hatred. It is an incitation to violence and retaliation. I'm a survivor of the Holocaust in the sense that I'm alive today, but in another way, no one who was there survived complete, not without a wound. A deep wound. Mr. Goldstein, your mother died at that time? She was killed, yes. She was thrown in a well. Mr. Goldstein, what do you think of when you see a, a swastika? The swastika means to me the murder of my mother. The swastika flew over the camp where it I was saw on the Jews arm of the circular. SS that sent my mother also Murdered. to the death camp. That's oh. what the swastika means. When I see the swastika, I know that even here in this country, I'm not safe with my life, that my children are not safe with their lives, even here. Mr. Goldstein, have you any reason to believe that you're in danger now? Certainly. Why shouldn't I? I got telephone calls. And these were threatening phone calls? Your Honor, I object. What is it, Counselor? Well, unless counsel is prepared to establish that the defendant made those telephone calls, I fail to see how they're relevant. They said they were Nazis oh, to me oh, also. Oh, Max, please. Max, that's all right. Please, I'm going to remind the spectators that they must remain quiet. There is no reason to connect the defendant with telephone calls. All right, all right, but I think we're headed for a different point. Overruled. These calls that you identify as Nazi, they made you fear for your life? That's right. Mr. Goldstein, what do you think would happen if the Nazis march in Skokie? What would happen? Would be blood. Do you have any plans to use violence against these Nazis? No, 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 I got no plan. But if they marched in the streets of Skokie, your new home, in their Nazi uniforms with the swastikas, could you guarantee that you would be able to control your memories, your horror, your rage? No. Who could do that? Could you promise that you would be able to control yourself from taking violent action against these Nazis? No, no, I couldn't. You feel that you might be driven uncontrollably to take violent action against this symbol of the murderers of your mother. I tell you from my heart, if I see the Nazis marching again with the swastika, I couldn't tell you what I would do. Do you think you might attack them? Do you think you might attack them? With guns, with baseball right. bats, right. anything right. that would attack right. them with. Right. 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 I may. Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear by the ever-living God that the testimony you shall give in this case, now on hearing, will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Be seated, please. Your Honor, I should like the court to rule that Mr. Collin is a hostile witness. Well, this is a civil hearing. We're not so touchy about those things. But, well, we'll consider this a hostile witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Now... 
Your name is Francis Joseph Collin. Yes, sir. You are the founder and leader of the National Socialist Party of America. The correct title is League Führer. Führer? Yes, well. Now, Mr. Collin, would you describe that as a Nazi organization? Yes, I would. I, uh, I show you this leaflet with the imprint of your organization. Have you read it? Yes, I've read it. Do you agree with the views expressed in it? I Objection, Your Honor. The witnesses' personal views are irrelevant here. They have nothing to do with his right of free speech. Constitutionally, neither the court nor the village of Skokie has the right to prohibit speech simply because of the views of the speaker. Counselor? Your Honor, we maintain that the reasonable reaction to the witnesses' proposed provocation will be violent. We therefore wish to make clear to the court just what that provocation is. That is a simple heckler's veto position okay, that Mr. has no... Okay, Mr. you've made your argument. Overruled. Go ahead, Counselor. <laughs> Mr. Collin, I read a passage to you from this leaflet. The Jews are responsible for the black invasion of southwest Chicago. We must attack them in Evanston, the North Shore, Morton Grove, Skokie, etc. Do you agree with these views? I do. Mr. Collin, have you ever read Mein Kampf by Adolf Hitler, and do you agree with it? Your Honor, we object. It is a constitutional principle that a man is on trial not for his views, for what he believes, but for what he does or intends to do. Overruled on the same grounds. But the investigation into anyone's political beliefs has no bearing on... Counselor, I have made my ruling. Have you ever read Mein Kampf? I have. Several times. And do you agree with everything in it? I agree perfectly with everything Adolf Hitler said. Now, Mr. Collin, you have said that the purpose of your proposed demonstration outside the municipal building in Skokie was to protest the action by the Skokie Park District in denying you a permit to hold a meeting. Is that correct? Yes. Was that the only purpose? Yes, sir. How long did you plan to demonstrate? 20 minutes. Did you plan to make any speech? No, sir. Or uh, distribute leaflets? No. And the number of demonstrators was to be limited to 25, am I correct? Yes. Did you plan or propose or indicate any intention of breaking any laws during the demonstration? No. I have no further questions. Your Honor, this is a classic case in which government officials are asking a court of equity to impose a prior restraint on the speech of persons advocating unpopular ideas. Now, the village of Skokie has shown only that the political views of Colin and his party are offensive and outrageous, which of course they are. They have failed to show any reason to believe that the defendants plan to engage in any sort of illegal activity whatsoever. The question of violence has been repeatedly raised here. But that threat of violence comes not from Colin and his party, but from others who would keep them from exercising their First Amendment rights. Now, Your Honor, the legal scholar Harry Calvin called this a heckler's veto, the theory that a hostile reaction of listeners to a speaker can be the grounds for silencing that speaker in advance. Now, I submit that failing any showing of illegal activity, this court cannot issue a prior restraint. It's my opinion, based on the evidence I've seen, the leaflets, the absolutely repulsive material in them, which the defendant avows completely, I believe he intends to make trouble, to incite to riot and cause bodily harm. Now, Mr. Lewison, you can split constitutional hairs, but the Constitution certainly doesn't give a person like Colin the right to come into a peaceful community and cause violence. So I see no need to delay a ruling. I will issue an order enjoining the defendants from engaging in any of the following acts on May 1, 1977, within the village of Skokie. Marching, walking, or parading in uniform, displaying the swastika, displaying any materials which incite or promote hatred of persons of Jewish faith or ancestry. Mr. Lewis, may I ask you a question? Do you think the ACLU will appeal this decision? Yes, we're going to enter an immediate appeal. We expect First Amendment to be upheld. Come on. The 
Mrs. Lewison. That was a fabulous job. Hi, Bert. Well, I guess you're going to file for appeal. Sure. I'll be talking to the appellate court tomorrow morning. Well, I'll see you in court. Doesn't it feel kind of funny? What? I mean, you've argued the First Amendment for us before. In 68, the Democratic Convention. It's kind of surprising finding you arguing for prior restraint. Well, it's surprising to find you, a Jew, arguing in defense of a Nazi like Colin. We are very busy right now. Could you call later? I'm sorry, Mrs. Margolis. This is your fault. Yeah, we're going crazy here. Mr. Hamlin has I all your messages. I won't be home before 10 o'clock. Mr. Hamlin, so Mrs. Margolis, I'm sorry I had to take this step. I'm See you soon. I'm sorry that you feel that way, sir. No, I'm sorry. Look, if you leave your name, okay, I'll be glad to have you back right away. Right, sir. There is no need to use language. Mr. Hamlin, you're fine. Well, what are the positions of your board of directors? Well, there's been no statement from the board yet, and I haven't heard heard from the National Hamlin, well, isn't this the first time the ACLU has represented oh, the Nazis? No, it's not the first time we've defended the rights of Nazis. We uh, represented uh, George, uh, Herb, Herb, George Lincoln Rockwell when we... Uh, Herb Lewis, he's a senior legal counsel to the Chicago office. Now, excuse me, there'll be a statement a little later. Please, just excuse me, please. Yes, yes Phyllis, what? Uh, the New York Times is on line one. Later, later. I'll call back. Mr. Hamlin... In the last three hours, we've had over a hundred calls, mostly ACLU members. Like Mrs. Margolis, they are not happy. Well, there's always some kind of a reaction when we get into these things. Not like this. The New York office called. They're getting the same thing. Resignations, protests. I had one lady tell me she was stopping a $15 check for annual dues. It's the same thing in L.A. Why? I mean, this is nothing new. We've gone to court for these people before, the Nazis, the communists, the Klan. Why is it that when there's a clear-cut case of violation of the First Amendment, nobody... Uh... Phyllis, I thought I said... Wiseman is waiting here to see you. Oh. What'll I do? Well... Yeah, bring him in. Morton Wiseman. Mr. Wiseman. Mr. Wiseman, how are you? I was sorry to hear you were in the hospital. You look fine. Thank you, thank you, David. I fully recovered. I go down to the exchange once a week now. I think you've met Herb Lewison. How do you do, sir? And this is one of our new legal staff members, Miss Ryan. Oh, Mr. Wiseman has been one of our most active supporters for many years. Care to sit down, sir? David, I've written you a letter. But in the light of our association over the last ten years, I felt constrained to come in person rather than use the anonymity of the mails. It is my resignation from membership in the Civil Liberties Union. Mr. Wiseman, is this connected with the case this morning? It is. I feel I can no longer, in conscience, support the organization in any manner. Uh, Mr. Wiseman, I think you owe us a chance to make our position. Uh, you've been a supporter of the ACLU long before I ever came with them. You've been through some very tough times. Yes, that's true. This wasn't easy for me, I assure you. The point is, I know that politically, you're a very conservative Republican. You were, you were very close to Robert Taft. Mr. Wiseman, I can't believe that you would abandon us during this crucial fight for the First Amendment. I am sorry. But this confrontation, this particular constellation of forces, has brought me to this conclusion. But the constitutional issues are exactly the same in all these different cases. I am, as you may know, a native Chicagoan. And as you say, a Republican. But, as used to be occasionally suggested to me at various clubs and social events, I am a Jew. The other day, I saw a man on television. I forget his name, the Holocaust survivor from Skokie. Feldman. Max Feldman. And it came to me. In a way, I too am a survivor of the Holocaust. 
Must one defend the right to speak for those who, if they came to power, would deny the right to freedom, indeed of life, to others? I remember uh, Justice Jackson's warning. The Constitution is not the suicide pact. Mr. Wiseman, when we file the appeal, I'll have plenty of time to develop all the philosophical aspects of this case. I'm very sorry, Mr. Lewis. But above all, there is something monumentally inappropriate in a Jewish lawyer financed by a membership disproportionately Jewish to go into a court to defend the rights of a few hoodlums to go into a Jewish community and proclaim that it was too bad Hitler didn't finish the job. I'm sorry. Bertha. Hi, Daddy. Hello, sweetheart. I want to hear the news. The appeal court just made a ruling. It isn't on yet. Uh, where's, where's your mother? Upstairs. She's been in bed since I got home from school. Anything the matter? I don't know. She took my stereo player in the room. She's playing records. Bertha. Uh, listen, uh, don't, don't switch the channel. Bertha, 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 you will not believe what I just heard on the radio in my car. The, 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 there was a ruling from the appellate court and they denied the motion for the stay against the injunction against the march. You understand what I'm saying? That they lost. The Nazis lost. How do you like that? Oh, they will appeal to the Supreme Court, those animals. But it will take a long time past the day when they said they were going to march. And I'm beside what court in America will say that Nazis could come here? How do you feel? I'm fine. The lawyer from the Civil Liberties Union. Free speech he was talking about. Well, what kind of free speech? Nazis saying they could come here to kill Jews? There's no argument. What kind of free speech is that? No, no, Bertha. We won't let them come to murder us. This is the end of the argument. Period. Put the music back on. What? Schubert. Don't you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, I understand. Please, put the music back on. Yeah. Just push. It puts itself on. Again, it's on Nazi now. Frank Collin yeah. was barred from his planned Skokie march. After that ruling, Collin held a press conference in the headquarters of his Nazi party near Marquette Park. George Peters was there. I want to make it clear to all the white people of this country that we will not allow the secret Jewish influence in government and the courts to keep us from protesting the communization Look at that. and niggerizing. God should punish him right on television. Our attorneys. That they shouldn't let him on TV. Daddy. You intend to obey the court order forbidding your march? Of course. We're law abiding. The injunction forbids us from marching in Skokie on May 1st. And we're going to obey that. But it doesn't say anything at all about April 30th, the day before. So, we are announcing now, on April 30th, the National Socialist Party will march in Skokie in full uniform in exercise of our right of free speech. This is George Peters reporting from the headquarters of the National Socialist Party of America. We'll be back. It's tomorrow, isn't it? 30th? Daddy, is that what they look like? It's funny. I mean, I've only seen pictures in books. 
old World War II movies on television. But I always had a feeling that I knew. That they looked familiar. That I'd seen myself. I mean, really. It's kind of crazy, but... Yesterday, I was downtown with Donna and Arlene. And we were riding the L through the loop. And I was pretending it was a train going to Auschwitz. Did you try to reach Judge Sullivan at home? I tried. It's unlisted. I know it's an unlisted number. Uh, try, uh, try my wheel. Did you find him yet? <laughs> well, try the country club. What? Get him to send somebody out to the golf course. Which country club is it? The Oak Park Country Club. No, better yet, you go to the house and have him send somebody else out to the golf course. Yes. That's right. Chicago PD just called. Collins started out from Marquette Park about 10 minutes ago. They're going to trail him to the Agents Expressway. Well, why didn't they stop him? <laughs> they don't want to get into it, Al. It's our problem. Mr. Silverman? Yes? You got him? No. We tried to get him last night. He was supposed to call first thing this morning, but... He knows about it. Yes. Hang on. Right. Hold on. Hold on. I'm holding. I'm holding. Well, what about downstairs? I got all my men coming in. Can you handle it? No. no. I, I put in a call to Springfield. They're not going to be able to move fast enough. How long? Uh, there's usually pretty heavy traffic on the Edens, even on a Saturday. Too bad it isn't a rush hour. Is this Bert Silverman? Yes. Hold on, Judge, please. Hello. Your Honor? Frank Collins. Yes. Chief Arthur Buchanan, Village of Skokie Police Department. 
You haven't got any right to stop me like this. I have a court order here restraining you from demonstrating or parading in the village of Skokie. That said, May 1st. This is the 30th of April. Yeah, I know. But as of 10.52 this morning, Judge Sullivan expanded the injunction, forbidding you from parading in the village of Skokie on the 30th of April and thereafter until further notice of the court. Colin, do you have any comment on the situation? Colin, what are you going to do now? Are you appeal the order? of the ACLU will go into state Supreme Court and appeal the injunction that banned Collins' march today. What happens then? Well, Father Kelly, that's hard to say. The case we've maintained so far depends on the implied police power used to avoid certain violence. Well, it did, Bert. I don't see anything wrong with that. That's the reason we've called this meeting. Now, I've explained this to the mayor. This injunction is a prior restraint, prior restraint of free speech. I thought the judge ruled that it was justifiable. That's right, Reverend. But that was Cook County Circuit. As we go higher and higher in the courts, they take a very dim view of prior restraint. Herb Lewison is going to call this the heckler's veto. What? The idea, if otherwise protected speech inspires violence in its opponents, the only remedy is to ban the speech. Well, the heckler's veto is a very shaky prop. On those grounds, Martin Luther King could not have marched in Selma, Alabama. Now, wait a minute, Mr. Silverman. That was not the same. You can't equate Martin Luther King with Colin and his Nazis. I really can't believe it's the same thing. I mean, there is a moral difference. After all, Dr. King was not attacking anyone. Dr. King was not trying to attack the basic principles of our lives. He was, according to the sheriff of Selma, Alabama. In fact, according to the majority of white Southerners. Excuse me, but I'm not interested in how many lawyers you can stand on the end of a pen. Now, this whole town, Christians and Jews, we're all in agreement on this. We have an obligation to those survivors. Now, they're all ready to stand together. This isn't politics I'm talking about either. It's just common decency. Which side are you on? I'm trying to do my job as an advocate, pointing out the reality to my client. I'm giving you my professional opinion, Your Honor. This injunction will not stand up on appeal to the higher courts. But you're our lawyer. Now, what do we do? Well, I, I've drawn up a list of proposed village ordinances for permits, liability insurance, for a ban of offensive symbols, all of which will effectively bar Colin. Yes, we can pass them, but will they hold up in court? Well, it'll sure eat up a lot of time. And it'll put the ball in their court. The count so far is 350 letters of protest and resignation. Now, the National Office in New York has figured out that across the country, 
Resignations will reach nearly 15% of the membership. Naturally, there's going to be a drop in contributions and dues. Probably in excess of that. I'm a little concerned, Dave, that we got ourselves into this position without an opportunity for this board to debate the issue. Well, I suggest before you get into a policy discussion, we ought to hear what the current legal situation is. Herb, can you fill us in, please? Yeah, uh, what we have here basically are two separate cases. Number one, the original injunction forbidding Colin to march. Now, that's been upheld by the circuit court, and we have it on appeal to the Illinois Supreme Court, which seems to be stalling, refusing to rule one way or the other. So we think we should take it to the United States Supreme Court to force Illinois to rule. Then there's case number two, the series of ordinances passed by Skokie last Monday. What we recommend now is to move on case number two, the uh, village ordinances, and go to court. If we use so much time and money for Colin, won't that limit the defense we can make for others who may not be as abhorrent? Right, we can't represent everybody. Mm. Look, damn it, why choose to take on a pathological anti-Semite as a client? We don't have so much money to spend. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Right. <laughs> the client is not Colin, the client is the Constitution itself. Come on, Herb, enough's enough. Sorry. No, no, go on, go on. Suppose these Skokie-type ordinances were in the hands of a racist sheriff facing black civil rights demonstrators or uh, against anti-war demonstrations over Vietnam. Suppose they were in the hands of a president who would do anything to silence his opposition. <laughs> I never thought I'd be sitting in a board meeting of the ACLU arguing the First Amendment. I'm going to quote Justice Holmes. If I get it wrong, you'll all correct me. If there is any principle of the Constitution that more imperatively calls for attachment than any other, it is the principle of free thought. Not free thought for those who agree with us, but freedom for the thought we hate. All right, let's get the issues straight. First, on whether you approve the original action in accepting Collins. What is it? No free speech for Nazis! No free speech for Nazis! No free speech for Nazis! I beg your pardon. No Could you tell me who's in charge? No yeah, it's a guy up there on the table. No, Murray, no Murray, let him alone. Nazis. Let him alone. No let him alone. No I'll take it. John, come on. I'll take no care of it. No free speech for Nazis! I'll take care of it. Come on. No free speech for Nazis! Um, no free speech for Nazis! Excuse me. No. Excuse me. May I speak to you, sir? No free speech for Nazis! I'm Mr. Hamlin. And I'm the director here. Down with Nazis! No free speech for fascists! May I remind you that this is a private office? Racism is the crime of America! Hey, hey, hey. I agree. But I am asking you and your friends to leave now. If the Nazis have a right to march in Skokie, then we have a right to occupy your crypto-racist office. We call the newspaper. No, Fascist no. propaganda is not free speech. I want this guy. I want, okay, let's just take it easy. Hey, you're the lawyer. I see oh, you on television. Okay. okay. Oh, you're the lawyer. Okay, that's it. Hey, he's the lawyer. Hey, man. You're the lawyer. Hey, 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 Nazi lover. It's a Nazi You sure we shouldn't call the police? Not yet. They've called the papers, but if no reporter shows up, they'll leave on their own in a little while. Well, we get it both ways. Nyer told me the JDL sat in in the uh, New York office. Well, I believe we were about to discuss if the board approves the decision to take on Collins's case number two. The ordinances, and we continue with... Is a motion the... in order? I suppose so, sure. I move that the board approve the action of the executive director in pursuing this matter, that we accept the second case and follow through on both cases to the United States Supreme Court if necessary. Is there a second? Yes. The motion being duly seconded. All in favor? Aye. Yes. yes. Today's ruling in the Supreme Court of the United States has instructed the Illinois courts to stop any further delay in ruling on American Nazi Frank Collins' appeal against the various bars to his proposed march in Skokie. Mr. Collins, do you have any reaction to today's events? 
We hail our victory in the Supreme Court. Excuse me, the Supreme Court ruling was only on the issue of delay, not on the merits of the case. Still, we consider it a triumph of white Christian America over the Jewish conspiracy. I am applying for permits. We will march in full uniform on the streets of Skokie on Independence Day. The glorious 4th of July. The Jewish Defense League will be there. If Colin and his Nazis march in Skokie on the 4th of July, we'll be waiting for him. And you can tell those Nazi-loving ACLU shysters up there. If they march, there will be blood, and it won't be Jewish blood. It would be a desecration of the graves of six million Holocaust victims if we didn't meet those Nazis face to face and fight them. You're going out? Yes. Yes, there's a meeting. Do you have to go? Yes, it's very important because uh, they're having a, a public forum at the, at the temple. That lawyer from the ACLU is going to be there. You know, the, the smart one. <laughs> I wouldn't want to be in his shoes. We're ready for him. Uh, Max, I don't want you to go. Oh, now, don't start, Bertha. I just don't want to be alone again. What alone? Janet is here. And I, I, I will be home 11 o'clock anyway. Let someone else this time. I can't. I was elected on the Saul Goldstein's committee for the Holocaust survivors. Where's the roller for the lint? And what can you do? What is the use? Nothing you can do can keep them from coming. Years ago, nothing anybody could do could keep them away. God's sake, Bertha. Oh, I remember the argument. I, I was a little girl. How could you know? It, it would have been a terrible thing to just pull up everything and, and, and run away from the Nazis. My, my cousin Joseph and my papa, cousin Otto, everyone saying, wait, wait, it can't be that bad. And then, of course, it was too late. And they are all dead. Bertha, that is exactly why we Max, should... this time... I don't want to wait. Max, let's go. Go? Go, go where? I, I, I want to go. go. Where shall we go? We're, we're in America. We're, we're American citizens. I don't care. I just want to go. Where do you want to go? You want to go to Israel? No. No, no. I, I, I'd be afraid. There are bombs, and then the terrorists, and the war. Why, I know terrible things are going to happen there, too. You can't keep it out. Even in Brahms, in the Allegro, you can hear them marching with their boots. Bertie, don't get yourself started, please. And there are uh, Arabs all around us. You know, there was a bomb in a supermarket in Tel Aviv. Four people killed. And my mama took me to my cousin Sophie in Breslau. And I never saw her again, or Papa, or Lisa, or, or, or Cousin Otto. Bertha, you're getting everything mixed up in one mishmash. And the Nazis will march here. Nobody can do nothing. Nothing. Nobody can keep them away. I want to go. What are you talking about, go? Go where? Where should a Jew go to hide? Bertha, listen to me. You hear? Listen. There is no hiding place. I am here. And in Skokie, we are not alone. There are Christians, Jews, everybody together against the Nazis. We stay. Let them go. You've got to see. It's different. This time... It's different. What we do this time is we fight. You're right. You're absolutely right. There is no question. If we fought 30, 40 years ago, if we stood up then and hollered, no, no, things would be different. But I tell you from the bottom of my heart, it is not the Nazis I am afraid of. It's that feeling inside to be helpless like you couldn't move your hands or your feet. Like something was stuffed in your mouth so you couldn't even scream. I wouldn't ever have that feeling again if I knew I was to die. It makes me ashamed, that feeling. 
Bertha, you should come with me. Get out of the house. Don't stuff your ears with music. Do something. Then you wouldn't feel the shame. I... Max, you go. I'll be all right. I'm fine. You go do what you have to do. I'm just a little tired. You didn't eat. You're going to lie down and close your eyes. That was the way to survive in the concentration camp. Don't let yourself fear nothing. See nothing. Be nothing. Make yourself such a nothing that pain or no pain, suffering, hunger, eating was all the same to you. Nothing. Bertha, for God's sake, live. Live! Bertha, what is the use of surviving if you refuse to live? Stop it, Dad. Bertha. Please, stop it. Leave her alone. I'm late already for the meeting. I, I promised I would be. I, I will be home at 11 o'clock. Mom. Mom. Listen, everything will be all right. It'll be okay. They'll stop them. They won't come here. No, no, no. No one can do anything. No one can ever do anything. Anyone who defends the murderers of Jews is a murderer of Jews himself. Young lady. There are always traitors ready to sell out. And Nazi garbage is not free speech, it's murder. I'm going to ask you to take your Never seat. again! Never again! Never Please again! Please sit down Never or I'll again. have to ask the Never police again. to sit you down. Never again! Never again! Never again! Never again! Never again. Let her take her seat. Never again. <coughs> I want to remind every one of you that this is a house of worship. And the Talmudic tradition calls for a calm and rational consideration of all points of view with mutual respect. Now I know that you will allow Mr. Lewison to finish his presentation with the proper courtesy. Please go ahead. Now, the point I was trying to make. The point I was trying to make was that basically the Nazis are not the issue. What is the issue then? The issue is the web of laws enacted by the village of Skokie that prohibits free speech by prior restraint. Thank you, that's the issue. Now, Throughout the years, the American Civil Liberties Union has consistently defended the right... Of Nazis! Uh, this is not the uh, first time! Uh, right. Right. That's the ACLU has consistently defended the rights of all Americans by defending the rights of the unpopular, the radical, and, as in this case, the... As the Corporation Counsel for the Village of Skokie, I'm dedicated to taking every possible legal step to keep Colin and his Nazis out of Skokie. Yeah. On the 4th of July and forever. Yeah. I should like to point out that in the German Federal Republic since the war, any Nazi party is illegal and it is forbidden to display the swastika. Why should we be denied the same wise protection? Right, right. I don't want to go into the legal points that are now before the courts, but I'm prepared to argue them in the proper place with my good friend, Herb Lewis. No friend to us. However, I am interested in obeying the law and in keeping the peace. You want peace? Keep the Nazis out! No matter what happens, we must remain calm. We must respect the law and we must keep the peace. The hell we will! You be peaceful! If the Nazis come here, we're gonna beat them into the ground! In the long run, 
In the long run. In the long run, the Jews will be dead. Never again. 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 As a uh, representative of the National Office of the ACLU in New York. Who asked you to come here anyway? <laughs> Although we support the action of the Chicago office, personally, I take a slightly different stand. I don't necessarily believe that defense of the First Amendment has to be made from some kind of pure philosophical, theoretical purpose. I think it's a practical, political necessity. If we agree that... What you sit down? I know what you If we agree that our purpose is to defeat what Collins stands for, to, to protect democracy against Nazism, against genocide, I say the most practical, in fact, the only way, is to defend the First Amendment as our strongest weapon. Let me ask you, who needs the protection of the Bill of Rights the most? I'll tell you, the weak, the most vulnerable in the society, if speech, if protest can be stifled by government, today, the village of Skokie against the Nazis, the same principle can be used again tomorrow, when others may have the desperate need to cry out for help and justice. Jews can't hide from Nazis in Skokie. Now, there's no doubt, there is a danger in letting the Nazis make their propaganda. Somebody may believe them, they may, they may grow. They may get more powerful. There is a danger in democracy itself. But it is far more dangerous to destroy the laws that deny anyone the power to silence Jews if it should come that they need to cry out to each other and to the world for help. It is because Jews are vulnerable. What are you people talking about? How can you? How? Naya, you're a Jew. Yes, I am. So how can you, a Jew, defend freedom for Nazis? What I'm saying is Nazis must be free to speak because Jews must be free to speak and all others. You're all the same, all of you. Naya from civil liberties, Rosen from anti-defamation, always calm, cool, always so reasonable. I said it to Rosen, I'm saying it to you. That's what they said about the Nazis in Germany. How many are there, a handful? What can they hurt? Let them speak! No. No, sir. It is not the same. Free speech was not protected in pre-Hitler Germany. The Weimar government was afraid to protect free speech. The Nazis were allowed to go into the streets and deny others their rights. There were hundreds of political murders. Meetings of the opposition were broken up. And the government took no action to control the Nazis and maintain the law of free speech for everyone. And because they could silence their opposition by terror, by violence, the Nazis could grow. No. No, sir. The answer is to restrain the abuse of raw power with guaranteed freedom. Listen, Naya. I wouldn't argue Torah with the rabbi. I wouldn't argue law with a lawyer, a professional. But listen to what I have to say. I lived it. I know what I'm talking if the day should come when we are both forced by the, the Nazis to march into the same gas chamber, on that day, you should be at the head of the line so you could holler smart slogans for freedom of speech. Freedom of speech for the murderers who are pushing you into the oven. In fact, Sir, I came very close to dying in those gas chambers. I was born in Berlin. My mother, my father, and I were able to leave Germany only at the last minute in 1939. My extended family, grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, were wiped out. They died in those gas chambers at Auschwitz, Treblinka, Bergen-Belsen, Mauthausen. I escaped. But in spite of that, no, because of that, I support First Amendment rights. Absolutely. I support free speech for everybody, for Nazis. Go back to New York. Go back. Go back. I'm with Camus, who said freedom is the concern of the oppressed, and her natural protectors have always come from among the oppressed. It's a matter of self-interest. 
Defending your enemy is the only way to protect a free society against its enemies. phone is a misdemeanor, okay? Knock it off. Murder! Nazi murderer! July 12, 1977. Illinois Appellate Court, 1st District, 1st Division. Village of Skokie. A municipal corporation plaintiff, appellee, National Socialist Party of America et al., defendants, appellants. The swastika is a symbol which is inherently likely to provoke a violent reaction among those of the Jewish persuasion or ancestry when intentionally brought into close proximity to their homes and places of worship. This is especially true for the thousands of Skokie residents who personally survived the Holocaust of the Third Reich. So too, the tens of thousands of Skokie's Jewish residents must feel gross revulsion for the swastika and would immediately respond to the personally abusive epithets slung their way in the form of the defendant's chosen symbol, the swastika. In summary, the order of this court is that the injunction as issued by the Cook County Circuit Court is to be modified, removing the ban on uniforms, but leaving standing the ban on the use of the offensive symbol the swastika. Nevertheless, we will march in full uniform with the symbol of white Christianity, the swastika. What about the second case, the Skokie Village Ordinances? Won't they still keep you from marching? We are continuing to appeal all the restrictions to the higher courts. I have no doubt we will win. I will march in Skokie under the full protection of the law in my full uniform with the swastika. You should live so long. Attorneys for the American Civil Liberties Union, representing Colin and his Nazi would-be marchers, were unavailable for Daddy, comment this afternoon. Home? Mayor Albert Smith of Skokie Daddy? said he was pleased home, with the decision. He said it was heartening to the decent people of Skokie. Where's Mom? Thank you, Bill. Upstairs. We will continue our in-depth... took out some chopped meat, but it's still, uh, still frozen. Mm. I'll make some kind of gook in the frying pan. Bill will be back to take a special... Daddy, I have to talk to you. Can you turn the television off? Shh, 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 shh. The news from the network is coming on right away. Cronkite, maybe we'll say something about Skokie. Well, can you turn it down? I wanted to talk to you about the lake. What lake? I told you. Penny and Don and a bunch of the kids are going to this place on the lake. There's a concert. You have to go to a, to a lake somewhere for a concert? Donna's sister has this place. It's this big old house right on the water, and there's a dock. There has been a lot of criticism by this station and other media about the sanitation conditions in certain South Side neighborhoods. Daddy, it's an editorial report. I want to reply. point out the WPMR is mistaken when they insinuate that the garbage collections on the With South boys? Side yeah, just some of the kids. We'd be back late Sunday night. Overnight? You're going to sleep overnight? Well, the concert won't be over till late on Saturday night. Mom said it was okay if it no, was all right. No, no, no. Daddy! In a house overnight with boys? I'm not going to sleep with them. I'm just going to... Please, don't talk like that. You're just being unreasonable. Janet, I don't like the idea of you riding around in cars late at night with God knows who. You're a young girl. You have plenty of time. Well, if that's what's bothering you, if I could drive, then I could control where the car went. Donna's sister's going to be there with her husband. It's going to be absolutely well, nothing. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Can't cut this stop. I have to call Penny and tell her. I don't want to talk about it. I am you don't want to talk about anything. One of the top stories of the day involves the latest... Where is Cronkite? 
in the controversy surrounding Somebody the else is sitting in. Chicago Nazis I'm so busy with the Nazi in march Spokie, and the meetings and the forums and being interviewed. Chicago headquarters of the Nazi party. Daddy, listen and to me. Shh. This is important. Today oh, sure, sure. With so-called Lee Cure, Frank Cullen. Daddy, you're not really You're afraid of the Nazis coming and get a big kick out of it. You're having a great time with all the interviews and the committees and the court cases. I will march in Skokie. And you love it. You love it because it makes you important. You want them to come. Dad! I'm sorry I'm not dead. I'm sorry I'm not stacked up in piles like those corpses in the picture. I'm sorry I'm not dead like Grandma Ida. Then I could be important to you. Sorry. Sorry. the way you did. I've tried. I tried to feel it. I tried to suffer for you and for mom so somehow it wouldn't be so bad for you. But I just can't. I just can't. It will be all right. It, it will be all right. Oh, please, baby. baby. You can go. You can go to the lake with your friends and Get your driver's license. It will be all right. You will be like the others. You will be just like all the others. No. I never felt like the others. I always felt something different. I don't know. For a long time, I've had the kind of feeling that things weren't happening to me that I didn't experience things for myself. For you and Mom, and a lot of people I never really knew who they were. Sort of shadows. Baby, baby, baby. We didn't want it to touch you, what happened. What should a child born in America have to do with that suffering. But that was not possible. And it wasn't just the Nazis coming to Skokie. No, no. It was long before. Without saying a word, we handed it to you in silence like the blessing Isaac gave to Jacob. But it was not a blessing. It was a curse. And your mama, afraid to feel anything for herself, and me, So I don't stay in bed all day and listen to Brahms, but I stay in my office 10, 12, 14 hours a day, filling my head with payrolls, inventories. God forbid I should sit quiet and think. So why am I afraid for you to grow up? For myself, I'm not afraid. That's a luxury that I learned to live without in the camps. But I'm so afraid for you. Survival, they talk about. Survival. You, you, are my survival. Where 
have you been? They're going to start without us. Oh, look what just arrived. In the circuit court of Cook County, Saul Goldstein versus Frank Collin et al. They made service right before I left the office. That's why I'm late. Oh, this is great. This is just what we need, a brand new case to defend for Collin. The Anti-Defamation League put a whole team of lawyers on it. They've invented a new tort, menticide. Well, that's catchy. The idea is speech is not the issue. That the threat of the appearance of the swastika and the Nazis all by itself constitutes a kind of assault on the survivors. A willful infliction of emotional harm. The process of resurrecting the emotional and psychological response to the original Holocaust. Creating mental damage. What are we supposed to do? Prove that the survivors wouldn't have any emotional pain? This is ingenious. I think there may be a few holes in it. I certainly hope so. Well, for one thing, that assumes that all of the survivors would actually witness the march. Or if they argue they don't have to be there in person, then the mere fact that there is a march constitutes the assault. Then where do you draw the line? What about a march in Chicago? TV news film of a march in New York. NBC is doing a big dramatic series on the Holocaust. Would you enjoy that because it might do psychological damage to the survivors in Skokie? I think it's a pit. The entire thing is offensive to the whole concept of free expression. Well, it's easy for you to say you're not Jewish. That's a rotten thing to say. Sorry. I just got this picture of me standing up in court, denying that there was any pain and suffering in the whole Holocaust. I think it's getting to me. You still getting those telephone calls? Yeah, we have an unlisted number now. Well, I think if we just argue that it's a heckless oh, look, No, I don't want to hear any more about it. We have a whole benefit dinner to sit through. Let's just not think about it anymore tonight. Mr. Johnson, Mr. C.L. Johnson, please pick up the white courtesy phone in the lobby. Mr. Bozeman, Mr. Bozeman, please report Let's to the cashier's office. I saw your name on the table list. We met at that same meeting about a year ago. I'm Herb Lewison. We were sitting with Harry and Grace Pilcher. Hello, Herb. Hello. How are things going? Is that rhetorical? Well, I hear you had some trouble over there. Yeah, people don't talk to me in toilets. Still getting resignations? Yeah, some. Got your new brief today. I don't think it's going to hold up. Who knows? I think it's a cheap shot. Why can't we let the court rule on the central issue and stop putting up all these smoke screens? I think your problem is you don't see the central issue. The reality of anti-Semitism. Oh, come on. Oh, no. Did you ever read that book by that Northwestern professor who claims that Hitler's murder of six million Jews never happened? It was a hoax? Yeah, I read it. Well, it's all over. For one thing, there's this whole Palestinian thing. There's a worldwide explosion of anti-Semitic propaganda paid for by various Arab organizations. You don't see that stuff. I do. How the hell do you expect the survivors in Skokie like Feldman to appreciate your fine philosophical nuances on the First Amendment? My God, they suffered enough. Do they have to go through it all over again? What about their human rights? Why don't you defend that? Look, I'm not going to argue with a guy like Feldman. I'm not going to try to give him logic and fancy law in the teeth of what he's been through. But with you, it's a different story. When Max Feldman sees Colin in his bloody uniform with his swastika, he sees his own past. He sees the real stormtrooper, the concentration camp guard, the, the Jew killer. It hits him. He reacts to it. I have no argument with him. But you should be able to look at Colin and see the present political and social reality. For a person dressed up in a Nazi uniform in America is a pathological irrelevance. Oh, no, no. Come on now. Now, don't underestimate the danger in this country. I'm not uh, underestimating. I think there's a danger. But it sure as hell isn't a bunch of Americans masquerading as second-hand Germans. You want to know what the American equivalent of Nazism is? Racism. 
Sure, that's our big thing. You're seeing a hell of a lot more of that than swastikas. I'll tell you what's more dangerous than Colin. It's a bunch of smug, slippery politicians using code words, reversing the whole drive for civil rights, cashing in on racism. That's what's happening all over the country. I know, that's why I'm here tonight. But I am primarily interested in the safety and security of Jews. Yeah, me too, this Jew right here. Do you remember Huey Long's line? If fascism ever comes to America, it'll come under the name of Americanism. The only defense for Jews, for blacks, for anybody, is freedom with the protection of law. Each of us knows the other has part of the truth, but we still can't agree. Well, the court's gonna rule tomorrow on the first case, the original injunction. Maybe that'll settle it. Supreme Court, State of Illinois, January 27th, 1978. The display of the swastika as offensive to the principles of a free nation or the memories it recalls may be is symbolic political speech intended to convey to the public the beliefs of those who display it. It does not, in our opinion, fall within the doctrine of fighting words. We do not doubt that the sight of this symbol is abhorrent to the Jewish citizens of Skokie and that the survivors of the Nazi persecutions, tormented by the recollections, have strong feelings regarding its display. Yet, it is entirely clear that this factor does not justify enjoining the defendant's speech. Well, it's a complete turnaround, isn't it? The march can't be prohibited. They can't be banned from wearing their uniforms and waving their swastikas around. Well, that's one. Why don't I feel happy? With any luck, it'll rain. Yeah. Is Herb Lewis in there? Hello. Mr. Lewison. Speaking. This is Al Woodruff. Remember me? Yes, I remember you from Newsweek, right? Do you know where I can find your client for comment? No, I haven't the slightest idea where you can find Frank Collin for comment. Well, uh, can you put me on to somebody who does? No, why don't you try finding him yourself? Look, I had the honor of representing him in court. I have no intention of acting as his press agent. Well, if you hear from him, give me a buzz. Right. As a matter of fact, I happen to know where Frank Collin is. Yeah, it's the one bright spot. With all the television stations and newspaper men looking for him to uh, interview him. He's uh, stuck in the blizzard somewhere between St. Louis and Chicago. Maybe when the federal court rules on the ordinances, he'll still be frozen stiff. Federal Court for the Northern District of Illinois, February 1978. In this case, a small group of zealots, openly professing to be followers of Nazism, has succeeded in exacerbating the emotions of a large segment of the citizens of the village of Skokie, who are bitterly opposed to their views and revolted by the prospect of their public appearance. Hell of a decision. They threw out every one of the ordinances as unconstitutional, oh. right down the line for the First Amendment. They even quoted Oliver Wendell Holmes, look. The principle of free thought, not free thought for those who agree with us, but freedom for the thought we hate. Freedom of thought carries with it freedom to speak and to publicly assemble to express one's thoughts. It goes on. Um, it is better to allow those who preach racial hate to expend their venom in rhetoric rather than to be panicked into the dangerous course of allowing the government to decide what its citizens must say and hear. Pretty sweeping. Yeah. What about that third one? The menticide thing? Hmm? Oh, uh, they threw that out of the lower court. And even if they appeal it, there isn't much of a chance of their using it to get an injunction. This is it. <sighs> then it's over. No, it isn't. Now there's nothing to stop the Nazis from marching. Our enemy has run out of Jew tricks to stop us. And I am announcing today that the National Socialist Party of America will carry the Nazi swastika flag in Skokie on April 20th, the birthday of Adolf Hitler. Governor Thompson says he'll be here in Skokie to attend the counter demonstration. Senator Percy has made a speech to the Senate calling for a massive counter rally. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not at all worried about how the people of Skokie will respond because I remember one freezing cold day when uh, hundreds of uh, Skokie citizens, uh, Christians and Jews alike, came to an outdoor meeting. And we were all wearing uh, the armbands with the yellow stars to show how we stood together against the Nazis. So 
If they march, we'll be there. What does worry me is that even though I know our people are peaceful, I can't vouch for the peaceful intentions of others who may attend. Now, every, every effort is being made to, to keep the peace, and... Uh, Al, Al, will you excuse me a minute? Excuse me, I'll be, I'll be right back. As the mayor said, we've uh, been in touch with the state police. Of course, we're mobilizing uh, the entire Skokie Police Department. Can I see you outside? Uh, sure. Our major concern is, of course, the safety of the citizens of Skokie. And the what is Skokie it? Police Department will make every I just got a call from downtown. Maintain. He's made a deal. Who? Colin. It's one of those package things. Chicago Park District. He gets a permit to demonstrate in Marquette Park, and he cancels Skokie. That's straight? I just got it from Chicago City Hall. That's all? He had us running in circles for a year and a half. You mean... That's it? He's cancelled. And that's the way it ends? Just like that? It's over? It's all over. What a waste of time and energy. And what did anybody get out of it all? I don't know. I guess it depends on who you are. You know the truth? I never wanted to march into that Jew town anyway. But I was on television in Chicago and on the national networks for a whole year. Millions. Millions of people saw me and heard what I had to say. And I won. I beat the Jews. I could have marched if I wanted to. I just changed my strategy. We had our rally in Chicago today. Only 12 people showed up, but... I have faith. People are getting fed up with the Jew government giving everything to the niggers. You show me somebody who feels that way, and I'll show you a potential Nazi. You know, for all the aggravation, actually, in a way, it turned out to be a good thing. Of course, I don't mean that anything about the Nazis can be really good, but in terms of public awareness of the history of Nazism, there is a compensating gain. You know, a whole generation has grown up that wasn't even born at the time of Hitler. And this whole world conflict between Israel and the Arab nations has resulted in a resurgence of anti-Semitism. Now, we of the Anti-Defamation League feel that a time may come when we will see actual violence break out against Jews, blacks, other minorities. And, and not just vandalism, but bombings and murders. When this happens, we may wonder what price we've paid for the purity of freedom of speech. At least the, uh, the Skokie experience can be a warning, a reminder that the Holocaust must never happen again. I think there should have been some way to keep the Nazis out of Skokie. But I don't think I, I can feel about it the way my father does. And the others. I've tried. Sometimes I still feel guilty, like I have some kind of obligation to their suffering. But I can't. I do feel different, like I was in two different worlds. Sometimes I don't know who I am. Sometimes I get mad and say I don't even want to think about it. But I do. I'm glad I'm alive, but I just can't carry it all. I mean, why should I be the one who has to carry everything? Sometimes I feel like it, it's not fair to me. It's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I'm the lucky one, when you think about it. Well, I'm glad as hell it's over. The ACLU really took a beating. I mean, we didn't quite anticipate but uh, we've put in a lot of work now explaining to our membership why we did what we did, and, and we're coming back, slowly. For me personally, it was very painful. 
uh, the people who hate me the most today for what I did, who actually think of me as, as a devil of some kind, those are my people. They're just like my aunts and uncles. They're people I really care for and never stopped caring for throughout this whole thing. And they still keep asking me, why? Why did you defend a Nazi? Well, it's always the despised and the unpopular who are the first victims of oppression. Ask the Jews. I mean, if I waited around till all the nice, respectable people were my clients, it would be too damn late. No, no, no. The test of a democracy is not just that the majority rules, but that the power of the government is limited by freedom. And the first place you got to go out and defend that freedom is the first place it's under attack. It's over now. So we lost in the courts. Those bastards have got free speech. They can go everywhere and say that they should kill Jews. Well, let me tell you something. We lost, huh? Did they march? Not in Skokie. Not one inch. And do you know why not? Because this time, this time we stood up and we fought them right back. And we told our story to the whole world. We were witnesses. We made them know how it happened, that such things do happen in the world. And the world lets it. <laughs> I ask myself, why, why did I live? Why did God let me live? Well, you, you, you can't help it. You ask over and over. I will tell you a true story. I, I remember in the camps an old man was praying in Yiddish, not even Hebrew. And he said, God, God let somebody live to be a witness. So that's why. To be a witness. To tell the truth, to stand up, to be able to fight back. <laughs> My little girl said to me, oh, she, she was mad. She didn't know what she was saying. She said, I enjoyed it. That's not true. Well, maybe. Because this time I stood on my feet and I showed them. I remember when my mother was going to her death and they said, there's nothing you can do, nothing you can do. This time there was. This time they couldn't wipe their feet on me. This time they couldn't Max. spit on me. Come on. This time they couldn't kill me. <laughs>